We were supposed to be in Chicago convocation. Uh, we wanted to go, me and my wife. We booked the ticket, but unfortunately the flight got cancelled and we tried uh, all other options, so there was nothing available. So God has different plans. So I thank the Lord for bringing us uh, once again to be part of the fellowship here. Uh, let us, uh, for our meditation, let us turn to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13. Let us read alternatively, verses 1 to 9. It's a very familiar passage. Let us prayerfully read, pray in our hearts. The Lord may speak to us. Every time we hear God's word, the Holy Spirit of God will minister to us. He is the one who speaks to us through his word in a new way, in a fresh way. Let us read Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13 and verses 1 to 9. Alternatively, on the same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by, by the sea. A great multitude were gathered together to him, and so that he got into a boat and sat, and the multitude stood on him. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Verse 5. Uh, some fell on the stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. And when he had the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on the good ground and yielded crop, uh, some hundredfold, sixtyfold, and some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time you granted to us to come into your holy presence, O Lord, and the the Lord's Day, the first day of the week, to worship Thee in truth and spirit. We thank Thee for this privilege and honor, Lord, as Your children, to come together and to worship Thee and to glorify Thee and to adore Thy holy name. We thank You, Lord, for the great salvation You granted to us. We thank You, Lord, for the Holy Spirit of God, whom You have given us, who dwells in our hearts, Lord. We thank You and we praise You for all Thy blessings, Thy favor upon us as we Lord, uh, meditate thy word. We pray, Lord, that you will speak to us, Lord, through your Holy Spirit. You will open our eyes, our understanding, our hearts to hear thy word and to also to understand thy word and to obey thy word. And uh, that way, Lord, we may be, Lord, uh, fruitful, uh, Lord, uh, in our Christian life and we bring glory to your name, O oh Lord. We thank you. Once again, we come at this time, Lord, uh, I commit myself. Help me, Lord Jesus, unworthy and profitable as I am. Pray, Lord, that you will grant thy word so that, Lord, we all may be edified and blessed. Thanking you for being with us and thy presence with us. Continue to help us and guide us. We ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. This is very familiar passage, uh, but uh, <clears throat> let us uh, study together uh, through the Holy Spirit of God. The Lord may speak to us and encourage us in a new and fresh way. Uh, so this is a parable of sower. Every, we have read many times, heard many times. We have heard messages also many times. Now, uh, Jesus was, when he was uh, talking about the kingdom of God, he was telling them, teaching them in parables. So uh, the parables are the you know, uh, earthly stories with uh, divine or heavenly meaning. The Lord wanted to communicate the heavenly things uh, to the people. And many times he spoke in parables uh, publicly and privately to his disciples. He explained to them. Even this parable also he explains to his disciples uh, so that they can understand and they can follow, they can obey and uh, uh, fulfill his purpose in their lives. Now, uh, verse uh, 3. 
Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. Verse 4, As he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. So there are three um, uh, kinds of uh, uh, no, the ground or the soil which is mentioned here. One is the first one is the wayside, and the second one is the stony ground, hard ground, a rocky ground, and third one is the where you know the thorny place or the uh, where there is a thorny bushes are there, and the fourth one is the good ground. So when the sower was showing, uh, some fell on the wayside, some fell on the stony ground, and some fell on the uh, you know, thorny bush, among the thorny bush, and some on the good ground. When this seed which was sown, uh, when they uh, grew up, you know, they, uh, you find that uh, they, 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 the, the results were different for all these four kinds of uh, soil, or uh, the ground, they, you find four different kinds of results. Now the first one is the wayside. Uh, I don't know how many of you have seen uh, uh, sowing the seed by the farmers. I have seen. Uh, so when they sow the seed, some you know uh, fall on the wayside. Some go into the uh, deep in the in the ground, but some uh, you know out of his hand it will go out of the way. They fall on the wayside. And immediately we find that birds will come and pick them up uh, and take them up. So that is a very uh, uh, physical thing which we see. Now what the Lord is uh, telling the people, what he's trying to teach them, uh, you know when, the, when we uh, sowing the seed is, you know the seed is the word of God, when we hear the word of God or when we read Word of God. Uh, so the seed which fell on the wayside is, uh, you know, compared to we come and hear the word of God and we go and forget. You know? We we become forgetful hearers. Week after we come, we hear God's word. Many messages, many God servants come and you know give the word of God. But uh, many of us, we do not remember the word of God. You know? What we have heard, probably if, uh, if someone asks you, what did you hear the last Sunday? I don't know how many of us we remember. You know? We don't even know also that we forget what we are hearing. Many times we hear, but we forget. So that does not have any effect in our lives. Just like the seed falling on the wayside, the birds will come and pick them up. So they do not go into the soil and bear the fruit. It was meant for bearing the fruit, that's why it is shown. But since it fell on the wayside, the birds came and picked them up. So the Lord is explaining this uh, parable uh, further in the same chapter. So when we hear the word of God, uh, when we do not understand. Uh, that means we don't ponder over it, we don't meditate on that, we don't think about it. We hear, that's it. There is no further action on the message that we hear, the word of God that we read or study. You know, sometimes we read God's word. Morning we, in our uh, you know, uh, busyness of life, we are so busy in so many things, we don't have time to read the word of God. No? We just like, take some uh, portion and read hurriedly. And uh, within no time we forget what we have read. Try to recollect what we have read. Many times we don't remember also. The reason is we do not understand. We are not taken, make, made efforts to understand. So we will go a little further. So this is, uh, we have to be careful what we hear. Uh, we need to meditate on it, ponder over it, study further, go and search. Like there was 
church in Berea, no? the believers, they were searching. After hearing Apostle Paul speaking to them, they went home and searched the scriptures. What he was saying is right, what he was trying to say. So trying, trying to dig deep, search the scriptures, try to understand, then apply in our lives. So unless we do that, make some efforts, it won't come automatically. You know, we don't, we, so easily we forget. So that is the first kind of uh, the soil. So the Lord is comparing such people who come here and go away. They just forget. James talks about that, you know, hearers only. They are forget, he calls them as forgetful hearers. James uh, chapter 1 and verse uh, uh, 22 says, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. If you are only hearing and not acting upon the word of God, what we have heard, there is no use for us and for others. So quickly, the devil will come and he just Plucks it away. The same thing he says. No, Jesus is explaining that in the further in the uh, uh, Matthew chapter 13. He says the devil comes and he, uh, verse 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was shown in his heart. So be careful. The word which was shown in our heart. We hear by through our ears and take it into heart. It is there. We have heard. But if you are not trying to understand it, not making effort, not pondering over it, studying it, meditating it, and trying to put it in practice, the Satan will come and pluck it away or snatches it away. He knows how to take it away. So that's why we have to be careful. The more, uh, to whom more is given, more will be required, you know. So we have been hearing. We are so fortunate, blessed people. We hear the word of God. We get the right teaching. Many, you know, servants of God will come and teach us many <clears throat> spiritual truths from the word of God. So we need to put them into practice. So we have to be careful. The Lord is reminding us how we have to be careful what we hear, the, what we study, what we read, put them into practice. Let us not be the hearers only, but also doers. If you are hearers, the word of God calls us as a, we deceive ourselves. And uh, further he says, James chapter 1, uh, verse 25, but he who looks into the perfect law of the liberty continues in it and is not a, is not a forgetful hearer but doer of the word. And this one is blessed in what he does. So let us be careful in what we hear. That's why it is good practice to make some notes. Many times we make notes but we don't open after that. It will be there in the book. So let us, these are very simple things, but if you put them into practice, oh, it will be a great blessing, not only to us, but also to others. We can share with others. Unless we experience, we cannot share with others. So that is the first kind of uh, uh, ground, that is very side, compared to people who hear and forget. They are called forgetful hearers and there is no fruit because the word of God is not there. The enemy has come and taken it. Second is a thorny bush, uh, sorry, stony ground. They hear the word of God very joyfully and when some difficulties come, some trouble, some tribulation because of the word of God, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, so, says you no. Know, because it is a hard ground, stony ground, there is no, uh, the root cannot go deep down, so it dries up. 
so there is no fruit. So the Lord is telling, you know, many times we hear, uh, I have seen when we go to, you know, convocation or special meetings or things like that, we are so happy, so joyful. Uh, we sing and uh, we feel as if we are in heaven. But afterwards, when we come to our practical life, when we go to our day-to-day -day life, how strong we are, you know. So, uh, he says, just because there is no death, there is no root deep down, we are not grounded and rooted in the word of God. What we have heard, what we have received, we are not rooted, not grounded. Our heart, you know, it is not going deep down, not taking deep root. That's why uh, it dries up. So our lives, spiritual lives also is like that. When we hear God's word, when we don't take deep in our heart and don't meditate, don't obey, then it dries up. The seed, though there is a, some growth, the, it sprouts, but because there is no root, there is no deep soil, so, it, so we need to, uh, he speaks of our deeper spiritual experience with the Lord. Uh, it doesn't come just you know, in one day, but it depends how how much we are willing to obey the Lord, how much we are willing to uh, follow Him day by day, you know how much we are willing to uh, obey the Word of God, even though it is a difficult thing. Many times we face difficult thing, many difficulties will come, but we are willing to obey the Lord day by day, step by step, so that we you know. Uh, uh, grow. And that is that is the reason the Lord puts us in the church. See, one of the reasons the Lord brings us and puts us in the church is to for our spiritual growth. Not only our spiritual growth, but through us others also may grow spiritually. So it is a mutually a mutual benefit, mutual growth. I help you, you help me. So uh, that's what I, uh, you know, in uh, first, uh, sorry, Ephesians chapter 4, I think. Ephesians 4, uh, verse uh, uh, 16. 4, 16. Yeah, so we find that, you know, when each part in the body, we are the members in the body of Christ, in the church, and as each part does its function, you know, works. So he says, uh, the whole body, the whole church grows. Not only we as individual believers grow, but we also help others to grow. That's what it means. The whole church grows, the body grows uh, when each function you know, does it part. And we have been uh, given, each person has been given, each member in the body has been given some specific function to do. So when we do, just like in the body, each member functions, the body grows, becomes strong. So similarly, the Lord has kept us in the body of Christ, that is church. Church is his body and we are his members. And when we do our function, each function, whatever God has given us, whatever role, whatever responsibility, whatever work, God has given us, when we function, then the whole body grows. And we also grow. So that is the reason God brings us into the church. In the early church, when believers were born again, they were converted, the Lord added daily to the church. Why? Because they, mu they need to grow. They must grow spiritually. So, uh, when we don't have, you know, deep root, uh, we are not becoming mature Christian, not growing spiritually, uh, we have become barren, we have become dry, we become fruitless. There is no fruit because it is dried. So that is the second uh, uh, kind of soil, the hard ground or rocky ground where there is no, the roots are not deep. 
So it dries up when difficulties come. Uh, so uh, now difficulties, sufferings are part of Christian life, right? Many times when difficulties come, tribulation come, uh, uh, you know, we uh, sometimes get offended, sometimes we uh, get, get discouraged, and uh, you know, sometimes we question God, why, why God has given me this? I am so faithful. Uh, I go every Sunday, I worship, I give tithe, I do all that. Uh, I read Bible. So, but why these difficulties? Many times, uh, but difficulties, sufferings are ways of, you know, uh, making us to grow in the Lord, grow strong in the Lord. That is the way the Lord takes us through. Paul telling to the churches, you know, uh, when he, he was on the missionary journey in 14th chapter, Acts 14 chapter, he says we must go through, we must enter the kingdom of God with many tribulations, difficulties. So that is the way the Lord takes us for our good. So we must enter the kingdom of God through many trials and temptations and difficulties. So there are many, uh, you know, blessings when uh, we go through difficult time, when we go through uh, suffering, though it is painful, but it is for our good. Uh, Let's read a few verses. Uh, what these difficulties and trials bring in our lives? Uh, let us read first, first Peter chapter one <coughs> and uh, verse six. First Peter chapter one and verse six. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while it need be, you may be. Uh, you have been grieved by various trials, verse 7 also, that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire and may be found to praise, and honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So it is a testing of faith. In order to test our faith, this is the way, you know, the Lord brings sufferings, trials, testing, in our lives, so that our faith grows, our faith is tested. All unwanted things are removed, just like the gold is tested you know, in the fire. So these trials are like fire, they test our faith, how genuine is our faith, are, are we just superficial? Uh, you know, we are coming and going, there is no deep work in us. So this, we are tested, our faith is tested by these trials and difficulties. So, the, then uh, James chapter 1, uh, verse uh, 2. My brethren, count it joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of faith produces patience. So, when we are tested, when we are trials come into our life, our faith is tested and we learn patience in our lives. So this is for our good. The Lord brings many sufferings, trials and difficulties. Maybe of any type of you know, suffering, maybe financial difficulties or in the family or emotional, uh, whatever it may be. So many times we have to go through difficult time uh, and, uh, in order to uh, that our faith is tested and we learn patience. Then another uh, uh, Hebrews chapter, uh, these, these are the uh, you know, blessings, benefits we uh, uh, get when we go through trials and difficulties. Uh, so uh, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse uh, uh, 10 says, uh, oh, sorry, not 10. Read the third. Yeah, 12, sorry, uh, 10. Yes, sir. For they indeed, for a few days, chastened us as seemed best to them. But he, for our profit, 
that we may be partakers of his holiness our particles of his divine nature in other words so in order to you know partake or inherit the divine nature the nature of the lord jesus christ in our life or in order to take part in his glory when he appears we have to go through trials and difficulties and suffering so when we you know the word of god takes deep root in us by meditating by obeying the word of god by honoring the word of god when we grow in the church you know we we our, our faith becomes strong and we are tested and we become more patient and we learn many things many spiritual lessons when we go through difficult time so that is the second kind of ground the thorny or rocky ground uh, where there is no deep root so we should not be like that our or our heart should not be like that we can also interpret this parable as you know uh, four kinds of hearts the forgetful heart which is wayside falling at the wayside and the stony heart hard heart if the word of god is not taking deep root when we face difficulties we fall away we uh, you know become uh, fruitless christians we become barren we become we are dried up there is no life in us so that is the second third one is thorny bush same uh, come back to matthew chapter 13 and verse uh, 22 now he who received the seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful so this is another area we have to be careful we watch when we hear the word of god we accept the word of god we obey the word of god many times the cares of this world the cares of this life the deceitfulness of riches which you know uh, come into our life they choke the word of god if you put a seed among the thorny bush uh, you, the the thorny bush won't allow the seed to grow the plant to grow it will choke so similarly if you know the cares of this life the riches a desire of you know being rich a desire for money not desire love for money is the root of all evil first timothy 6 10 says not that the lord is uh, he he gives what we need not that he does not bless us he will bless us the lord will bless us but you know having love for this riches and love for money he says is the root of all evil all evil desires come which are contrary to the spiritual life so uh, we have to be careful the word of god very clearly instructs us do not love the world and things in the world what does the world offer first uh, john chapter 2 and verse 15 we'll read first john chapter 2 verse 15 do not love the world or the things in the world if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life is not of the father but it is of the world so this is what the world offers the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh the pride of life so the word of god warns us do not love the world 
Let not the cares of this life. Jesus told, do not worry about your life. Your father knows what you need. No? Matthew chapter 6. Do not worry about your life, what to eat, what to wear, you know, where to dwell. All these things the Lord knows that we need and he will provide. Our father knows that we need these things. So let us not allow the these things, things in the world, the flesh, the desire, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, things, pride of things, materialism, desire to have more things. We are not satisfied with what we have. We want to have more and more. We want to earn more and more. Nothing wrong in earning. We need money. But having love for the money. You remember that rich young ruler came to the Lord and he went back sorrowful because he loved riches more than the Lord. He loved riches more than the eternal life. He came with a great desire, the right desire to, to have eternal life. When the Lord told him, you sell everything you have, give to the poor and follow me, then he went back, sorrowful. So he had a desire, a love for the money. He loved riches more than God. So that should not happen to us. The cares of this, it is good. We have to think about our life, our children, our family. All that is necessary. But we don't dwell upon that all the time. So that spiritually we are not growing. The more we worry, the less our faith becomes less. Worry kills faith, they say, you know. So if you worry about things of life, then we show that we don't have faith in God. We don't believe that God will provide. So, cares of this life, desire for riches, these are the things which choke us spiritually. And we all are tempted in this area, you know. Things are very, the, the, the world offers very attractive things. So we are easily drawn into these temptations. And our spiritual life is choked. And that's why we are not growing spiritually. We don't find the fruit. So let us take warning uh, about the things of this world. You know, when the temptation came to Eve, God gave everything to them. But only one tree they he for, told them not to eat. But the devil brought the temptation. And when she saw that uh, tree, that fruit, it was beautiful to look, very attractive to look, very good for food. And she was drawn. So the, this is what the world offers. Jesus also was tempted. So we have to be very, very careful uh, not to be choked by the things of this world, cares of this life, riches, the desire for riches. So let, let's allow the word of God to sink deep in our heart and let it bring forth fruit. So that is the fourth kind of soil. Matthew Gospel chapter 13 and uh, uh, verse 23. But he who received a seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. So this is what the Lord is looking in our life. So there are four uh, steps mentioned there in order to bring forth this fruit. One is hearing the word of God. That we all do hearing the word of God or reading the word of God when we read personally. So hearing the word of God. Then second is understand it. So understanding 
take some effort. We have to spend some time. We have to meditate. We have to ponder over it. May search the scripture. Study a little bit more to understand what the particular verse says or the passage says. So understanding is very important. And in other uh, uh, gospels also it is mentioned. If you read Mark 4 and uh, Mark 4 and verse 20 says Yeah, so hear the word, then accept it and bear fruit. In my version says accept. So hear the word, understand the word, then accept the word. You know, apply in our life. This is for me. Accept the word. And another uh, word is mentioned in Luke's Gospel, chapter 8 and verse 15. 8, 15. Ah, so keep it. Hear the word. Here is everywhere. In all the three Gospels is mentioned. Hear the word. But then what you do after that is very important. Understand the word. Accept the word. Keep the word. Keeping is obeying the word. Jesus said, no, he who hears my saying and obeys them and keeps them is a blessed person, is a wise person who builds his house on the rock. Matthew chapter 7. So hearing and obeying God's word is very, very important. When the Lord speaks to us, you know, through messages, through reading the word of God, when he speaks to us, if you do not obey the, his voice as his word, whatever he says, you know, individually, God speaks to us, no? If you do not hear, obey, do not keep the word of the Lord, then what happens after either it we forget it or we it, it becomes lifeless, dried, or it is choked, so it does not bring fruit. But if you are obeying the word of God, it will bring fruit. You don't have to do anything, extra thing to bring fruit. You obey the word of God. The more you obey, the more the Lord will speak to us. And the more we obey the word of God, more we are becoming fruitful Christians in our life. Now there are generally, uh, broadly three kinds of fruits which the Lord is looking in our life. One is the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Joy, peace, love long-suffering, endurance. These are the fruits which are mentioned in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. These are inward peace. When the Holy Spirit of God works in our lives, these are, you know, inside us. If these fruits are not inside us, the Spirit of God is not producing this fruit inside us, we cannot be fruitful. He speaks of our life, our testimony. So this is the first kind of fruit the Lord is expecting. The second kind of fruit the Lord expects from us is good works. Ephesians 2.10 says, you have been created for good works. And you walk in them. 2.10, Ephesians we are not doing good works or for our salvation. Salvation is free, free gift of God. We have been saved by grace, by faith. We cannot earn salvation by our good works. But we are created, we have been saved to do good works. The Lord said, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify God. 
So we are created to do good works. And when the Lord comes, we will be rewarded according to our work. If you are not doing any good works, then when the Lord comes, we will be empty-handed. We will be ashamed to see him, to face him, because we don't have anything to give to him. So we are created. Lord expects good works from our lives. The third is third kind of fruit the Lord expects in our life is uh, John's Gospel chapter 15 and verse 16. I have, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. That you may go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit may abide. Bringing others to Christ. The Lord saved us not to just, you know, to enjoy his blessings to ourselves, but he has saved us so that we can share this great blessing, the gift of salvation to other, with others, bring others to Christ. How do we bring others to Christ? The Lord said, you are mine. Witnesses, no? Whatever the Lord has done in my life, don't keep it to yourself. Share with others. Share your testimony. Share about Jesus Christ. You are received freely, give it freely. So the Lord expects to bring others to Christ. And be fruitful in an increasing way. If you are bearing 34, the Lord is looking to have 64. If you are bearing 64 fruit, the Lord is expecting, looking for 100. He wants 100%. Hundred four fruits in our lives. So this is the parable the Lord told to people and he explained to his disciples so that they may, you know, apply, hear the word of God, understand the word of God, accept the word of God or receive the word of God and obey the word of God, keep the word of God. The Lord is not Asking us to do impossible things. Little by little, step by step, one by one. One step we take, the next step the Lord will show us. So the Lord expects us to be fruitful, like a good ground. Noble and good heart, where the word of God will take, take a deep root and bring forth much fruit. So we have been receiving the word of God, you know, every time. But what, what is the outcome? We have to examine our own life. The Lord expects each one of us to be a fruit-bearing, fruitful Christians. I have chosen you so that you may go and bring forth fruit. The Lord has given us great and great responsibility to share this glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with others who do not know. So let us take this seriously. Let us think about it. Whatever, wherever we are, whatever we do, we can share our testimony. We can share about Jesus Christ. Everyone can do. We need not be preachers. We need not be great evangelists to share the gospel. It is our own experience, personal experience. How the Lord has changed me. I was a sinner. God has forgiven me. God has given me his spirit. And he has given me eternal life. He has given me the joy of salvation. A great hope one day that we are going to see him. This hope people do not have. So it's our responsibility to share with others so that they may also come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless this word and uh, help us to be uh, fruit-bearing Christians.